Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. In this new series that I'm releasing here on YouTube exclusively, I'm gonna be showcasing how to do your first RBD sim in Houdini. In this first video, we're just gonna set up a simple brick wall and we're gonna knock it over with a projectile. And then we're gonna go further and further along in subsequent videos and so that by the end of this series, you should feel confident in rigid body dynamics. So let's go ahead and get started with just a simple geometry node. And I'm gonna call this wall. Now, um, I'm not gonna do things to one to one scale, but just notice that it is zero to one here and that is meters. Uh, Houdini's native resolution is in meters. So just be aware of that when you're dealing with the physics sims. So if you go in here to create bricks and you make them from like zero to two, you're creating two meter long bricks. We're not going to do that. So I'm going to create a box here and I'm just going to shrink this bad boy down to, let's say, I don't know, 0 0.2, 0 0.05, and then let's say 0 0.08. And uh, we get this nice little brick right here. It's not exactly one to one, but it'll work for our purposes. We'll call this base brick. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a line right over here. Uh, and this line is going to be our uh, where we're going to lay out our bricks, essentially. So I want to go in the X direction. So let's go ahead and go X and then I'll turn off the Y. And here goes our line. Uh, and right now, we just all we get is two points. That's all we're getting. And so in order to make this work, what I want to do is I want to create a series of points. But right now, it's only one meter long. So let's make this, let's say, I don't know, almost 10 feet at this point, what I can do is add more points by adding in what's called a resample. There, and you'll see we get a bunch of points. And to see how this is going to work together, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in not that node just yet a copy to points. This first input is the geometry I want to copy. We're going to make that our bricks. And the next one is the points we want to copy to. And if we look at that, you'll see that we get our bricks laying out. Now it's not perfect yet because what we have to do is come up to this resample node and uh, we need to uh, reduce or rather increase the length uh, between points. So if we zoom in, you'll see that we increase the length here. Now um, we want to get this as close together as we can. I think that works. And then what we could do is come down here to the base bricks and we could just change their size like so. So now we have our first line of bricks. Uh, what I can do after this resample node is then throw in a copy and that's a copy and transform node. And uh, on this one, we can create the next layer of bricks uh, by just coming in and on the Y axis, we'll just, uh, we should do it here. Just go up a little bit. It's going to bring this down. I think we have from here. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. And then I'm just going to go on the X axis and let's say, I don't know, let's start with point one and uh, we'll just do this by it doesn't have to be perfect. Cool. I do want a little bit of space for this demonstration. So that's why I'm leaving that there. And then I'll do another copy. Let's make this easier. I can come over here and just copy the parameter from the Y axis. So we'll copy this, come down here, paste relative reference, and we'll actually multiply that by two by hitting the asterisk and typing two next to it and just click and you'll see that it just goes up perfectly. And then we need to create some copies here so I can just keep going up. And how high should I go? Let's go to the front viewport. So this is two meters. It's only about six feet. So let's go a little bit higher. I'd say 25 just for this video. Cool. So we kind of have our wall set up. The next step is to set this up for a simulation. So let's go back to perspective. And uh, what I want to do now is I want to take these and you can see that I'm in points. Uh, I have these selected and you can see the points that I, um, I have geometry here. I actually want to get these turned into primitives. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a node here called an assemble node. Just drag that in, throw that. And what this node is going to do is if I turn on create pack primitives, we're going to get a bunch of bricks that are primitives to see how this works. If I press W in my viewport, you'll see that those points are now in the middle and those represent our primitives. Now we have this weird funky thing happening to fix this. I simply just come over here and type in a normal and you'll see that it'll fix. And that's because what's happening is we actually don't have any normals on our geometry. So we just have to give it normals. And there we go. There is our packed primitives. If you go to the geometry spreadsheet, you can see here on the points that each point now gets a name. 
Over here on the primitives, nothing's really happening uh, as far as attributes, but we have primitives now. So 749 primitives, and you should have 749 points. This is essential for the simulation. That way we're only simulating singular points. So anyways, we have our assemble now. The next thing I wanna do is we wanna go ahead and create a null, and we're gonna call this out wall. And I like to create my simulation networks here in the SOP level. And I'm going to call this a DOP network. And it basically is we're going from SOPs to DOPs right here in the SOP network. It's pretty cool. It's easy to do. There's no point in coming out and creating a whole other network at the OBJ level. And so let's go ahead and dive in. We'll actually call this wall sim. And uh, by default, we have nothing in here. So we have to build this out. So to get started, I'm just going to start with what we're actually talking about in this video series, a rigid body solver. Okay. And uh, let's just go and pipe that down here. I also need a gravity because we're going to need at least some force happening. So there's the gravity force. Okay. Uh, don't worry about the air. That's just because we have no objects being simulated now. Let's type in a merge now between the rigid body and the gravity. And I'm going to type in a ground plane. Now, important, make sure that the ground plane, if you click on the merge node, that the ground plane is the first input or else it will not calculate the way you want it to. Let's go ahead and bring in our wall now. To do that, I'm gonna add in a RBD packed object. And we're gonna wire this into the first input of our rigid body solver. And if you come up here, you'll notice by default, it wants to look for a SOP path. We have one because we created one, the out wall null that we created. So we'll just put that here and there is our object and if i were to come in here and hit play kind of cool it just falls apart on us and that's because we don't have any what's called constraints to keep these in place uh, and we'll create those here in a few moments now you'll notice that this is playing back really really fast so to fix that problem if you come over here you'll notice there's a stopwatch just click on that yours may be over here on the left um, but it's the same icon runtime toggle and this will give it to a real-time toggle rather and this will give it a little more accurate pretty cool again because we create all this space here is what we're seeing is a little accordion effect um, as the bricks fall down and because we have gravity and a ground plane they're coming into contact here again one of the most common mistakes that i see uh, with students is they accidentally reverse their inputs here without realizing it and you'll see that It'll just fall through the ground plane. And that's because it's simulating in a specific order. Uh, so you just need to make sure that they're swapped. Let's go ahead now and try and prevent these from actually falling. So we could just have a static wall in place that we could interact with with an object here later. This is actually quite easy to do. And this is one of the reasons why I'm actually showing this video first before we go in and start talking about fracturing, which will be in the very next video. And that's because if you understand this process, you can work with any fracture that you create down the line to create exactly what you want. So hopefully you've watched this video in its entirety because when you get to the next video, it's gonna make complete sense on what's actually happening. So from this assemble node, you will notice that in our geometry spreadsheet, if I click on this, in our points, each point has a piece ID or a piece name. And that's because right up here, we have this output prefix named piece if i were to come in here and let's say brick you'll notice that it actually gives each one of these a name via brick pretty cool now what we want to do is i want to come off of this assemble node and create a new tree and on the node graph that's going to give me what's called constraints now houdini has this handy dandy node called connect adjacent pieces now these are called pieces that's why by default they're called a piece if I just connect these two right now, nothing's going to happen. Okay. Now the piece attribute here is name. So we don't want to change the name. Uh, nothing's actually happening yet. But if I come down here and increase my search radius, you'll see that uh, these white lines start to show up in between our uh, points. That's good. But uh, we want these bricks to really be glued to each other as if there's mortar in, in being put there. Even though we can't see the mortar, we want that there. So what I'm going to do is come down here to the max connections, and we're going to drive that up all the way. Because I want them to find all the connections they can. You can actually go higher than 5 and go to 10 if you want. Um, I think for this simulation, this is a little extreme. So we'll go to, let's say, 5. Eh, maybe we'll go 6. That looks pretty good. 
So this is good. We have this started now. And if I come down to the geometry spreadsheet, you'll notice nothing really has changed. And that's because we have to give it an attribute to use uh, in the primitive area. So let's do that. We're going to do an attribute create. Now, this attribute, we want to create it at the primitive level. So we're going to create this at the primitive, and we're going to call this constraint name. This is the most important part right here. What we do afterwards is uh, because of what we did here. And you'll see that we had constraint name on our geometry spreadsheet. I actually don't want to create a value per se. I want to create a string. A string is just a um, coding way of saying name. This is We're going to give this a name. I'm going to call this glue. Remember this, you can even take copy this and put this down on a notepad. This is going to be a very important value right here that we just added. And then all we have to do is add in another null. And we'll call this out constraint. Dive into the wall sim again. And let's go and add this network we just created. I like to add this network after my gravity. Um, I want it to compute here. I want it to be the last thing that it computes. And to do that, I'm going to do a constraint network. Just drag that in and we'll notice that we have an error because we still need a second input. And so what we'll do is we'll add a glue constraint relationship and pipe that in to the second input. Now we still have an error because we don't have a SOP path uh, uh, being called to just yet. So let's go ahead and take care of that. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and add the out constraint. And if you did this right, hit W. If you look closely, you'll see that there's red lines now that will signify your glue constraints. So let's see what happens. And you'll see that the wall is no longer collapsing because we have relationships between each piece. All that's left to do now, let's have an interact with the projectile. To do that, I'm going to press U and dive back up. And let's just go ahead and create a sphere. I'm going to do a primitive. Okay, I'm going to template it so we can see it. Let's go ahead and just shrink this down to, let's say, I don't know, 0.6. This is important, though, because now that it's this small, um, it's going to be harder for the computer to actually calculate what you want it to do. Uh, but I'm just going to do it as a primitive. And let's move this over. I don't know. Let's say point, oops, 0.5. So it's like, uh, let's do 1. 1. 1.5. There we go. In the middle. And then I just want to move this over. Uh, let's do this back this way. So I'm um, negative Z like that. Cool. Let's do a null. We'll call this out projectile. So we have that now. Let's dive back into our dot network. Uh, and then we just have to add this object in. Um, I like to add it up here. So we'll add a merge. We'll do another RBD packed object. Since it's a primitive, this will work. If it's in polygon, you're going to have to pack it for this part, but that's okay. We did a primitive, so. And then we'll just add the out projectile. And if I just come in here and hit play, it's nothing's going to cool is going to happen. That's because I haven't given it a velocity attribute yet. And we could do that here at the packed object level. Uh, if you look over here, we have velocity X, Y, Z. Let's give it a velocity, let's say 15. And let's just see what happens. And then boom, we're now interacting. We could take this to the next level, let's say 20. So it's not dropping as far. And uh, let's say we want this brick wall not to launch off into space. What we can do to fix that is fix that right here. Let me just drag this down. Really easy to do. What we can do is attribute create. And under the attribute create node, I'm gonna create an attribute called active. And this is gonna be a point attribute. And I want this to be an integer, and I want it to be default 1 and value of 1. Okay. And then what we're going to do is do a group. This is going to be a point group. Let's go ahead and call this pin. And uh, I'm going to create my own by using bounding. So if I click on this and I hit enter, we're just going to be able to drag this over. Let's move this down. By, let's say right there. I think that's good. Okay. And then we'll do another attribute create. And we're going to use this one to override the active attribute. To do that, let's go ahead and just come up here and you have your pin group. Let's call this active. Make sure it's spelled properly the same way up here. And then uh, we'll do uh, points, integer. And on this one, we're going to leave it zero. 
And if you did this right, if you go to the geometry spreadsheet, go to points, you'll see that we have some active zeros here. And if I scroll down, we have ones. That means the zeros are inactive, one is active. And Houdini is smart enough to read this already. I don't have to add anything here at this level. And let's see what the change is. And then boom. And you have your first simulation with RBD. If you like this video, let me know in the comments below. I'm doing this video series as an opportunity to showcase how you can simply do uh, fractures and simulations with destruction and dynamics in Houdini. Hopefully you guys learned something from this video. I'd love to see some of the work that you guys are creating out there. Be sure to share that with me on Instagram as well as Twitter. I have one of those now. I'm going to link that below in the description. Thank you for watching this video. If it's your first time here, be sure to like, subscribe, and until next time, always be creating.